Jamie, I am so glad you ordered this video, okay? This was a great move out of you. Uh, we are going to make you a ton, a ton of money in the next, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, right? We're probably going to have about a 20-minute video for you right now, and you're going to make a lot of money. It's probably the most profitable investment you've made in the Cleveland market because that's what I do, folks. I help people like Jamie invest in the Cleveland market. You see, Jamie, your situation is you are from Newton, Connecticut. This is your first time investing in the Cleveland market. You want to do so because the price points are incredibly low, and you're thinking about buying this four-unit apartment building, okay? And you can't sniff a four-unit apartment building for the price that this one is being uh, offered or has been offered in the past, okay? And I, again, I'm so glad you came uh, here to me because I'm going to walk you through this because I'm incredibly familiar with this property. Before I start getting into everything, I just need everybody to know. Folks, if you're thinking about buying real estate in the Cleveland market, do not spend your hard-earned money until you do the proper due diligence. Be like Jamie. Have me look over your deal. Watch the rest of this show to see how much money I put back into her pocket, okay? A little bit of due diligence is going to go a long way. If you guys want to work with me like you're going to watch me work with Jamie here momentarily, below this video, click the notes, book a call with my team. We'll walk you through the process. And Jamie, uh, I'm going to save you a lot of money because this property is fucking dog shit. This is a dog shit investment. And the seller of this dog shit investment has been trying to hawk this piece of refied garbage to unaware out-of-state investors since the very beginning of COVID. Uh, as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you uh, some footage because you're actually – the third person uh, over the last almost three years now uh, from out of state who's reached out to me about this fucking garbage investment. Uh, you're the third person who's reached out to me. So you're the third person uh, who I have rescued, who I have saved from making a very big financial blunder, right? Uh, this is how long uh, this particular person has been trying to hawk this piece of crap uh, to some out-of-state out investor, right? The first time I analyzed it, and I'm going to show you that footage shortly, uh, was the MLS Search and Analysis Show, episode 103. As I talk to you, Jamie, this is episode 1,993, right? So, I don't know, what is that? Like, 1,802 episodes ago was the first time uh, I had to save somebody from uh, just throwing their money away on, on this property, all right? So what I'm going to do now, Jamie, is I'm going to want you to watch the original footage where I'm going to go over at length everything I think you need to know about this investment and why I think for you as a brand new investor from out of town, it would just be a, a huge mistake, right? Because the footage you're going to see, uh, that particular client, and I saved somebody else. Uh, this this client, his name was Angus, right? This is like two, three years ago or whatever. Uh, he, he had a very similar story to you, right? Out of town, new to the market, got drawn in by the potential cash on cash return, the low price, right? Being offered to him at 149000 for a friggin' four-unit apartment building, right? Well... Uh, partly because I saved some people for making mistakes. It's been three years, and they still can't find somebody dumb enough to give them that money. And I am sure as hell going to make sure the person who does give them money is not you, Jamie. Let's take a look at everything I had to say back then. And then what I recommend uh, is you either hop back on another call with my team and talk to us about uh, having me go out and find investments based on your wants, your needs, or your goals, or uh, do what you did here, before you spend the money, send me your deal, and I'll make sure I set you up. Because it's not about doing all the deals, people. It's about doing the good ones, avoiding the bad ones. It's about matching you with the right property. And for somebody in your situation, Jamie, this ain't it. 
This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. One eight two five Lakeview Road, East Cleveland, four four one zero two. Now this one is actually also currently under contract, and normally I wouldn't want to spend any time uh, going over this property with you because at the very moment you can't bid on it. Now a lot of these deals, I mean, it's very common for rental properties to fall out of contract, just so you guys know. So like if we analyze a property for you and then you put in your bid and you get outbid by another investor. Don't think that that's necessarily all she wrote. A lot of these deals come back on the market, guys. Investors around the world are, you know, some of them are flaky. I'll be honest with you. I mean, we get we get folks to flake. If, you, if you're a big time viewer of the Investment Properties for Sales show, where that's the properties we're selling, that we email to you guys at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every day. If you haven't been watching that show, you friggin' should. So make sure you smash that subscribe button so we can send that to you every day. Those shows come with video tours. But uh, you'll see some of the properties come back on the market because, you know, folks flake or they get their inspection and they realize, oh, this is more work than uh, I was thinking. You know, when I explain these properties to people, I try to give the most transparent look possible. But I want everyone to do their due diligence and get the inspectors in there so they can really go through these properties on a fine tooth comb. Because I, I, I notice a lot of viewers, sometimes you guys try to think best case scenario in your head, even if that's not what I'm saying. So that's why, you know, we push so heavily on making you guys get those inspection reports because dude, even if the property is a brand new, beautiful million dollar house was just built yesterday, inspectors uh, reports have a way of making that look like a, a rough property, which is good. That's, that's what you want. You want the most critical, you want to look at a property through the most critical lens possible. So like with all that said, right, this particular property, 1825 Lakeview Road. Under contract, it could you know fall out of contract, it could be available, but at the moment it's not necessarily available. But the biggest reason I wanted to talk to you about this property is really to just set proper expectations and get things going because you uh, seem uh, to be very interested in this property and from the looks of things I understand why, okay? It's listed by Keller Williams. They've listed at 149,900. It is a big old quad. Quads are my favorite properties kind of like this color too not that that actually matters but i do like the dark uh bluish gray color i think that looks pretty cool uh it doesn't look great on the sides when it's like not matched with the rest of the red brick but i do think it looks cool but that's just uh completely irrelevant um don't think that uh, that adds value it doesn't uh cruising through the photos right we got big old units here you know you got the hardwoods they got the little cheapy uh what they did is you see this in low income rentals quite a bit instead of actually um staining the hardwoods you just take like uh, dark brown deck paint uh, that's how you could tell that the landlord is either got something seriously low income on his hands or he's just a uh, total slumlord uh but you know the units they're big they're spacious uh they look pretty okay the kitchens they got some like vinyl wood flooring in there fixtures uh, they're decent uh i mean it's like not the greatest thing in the world, but it's not the worst thing in the world. So building wise, uh, nothing major, like everything would look uh, pretty promising. Um, but here is, is uh, where it gets dicey. And this is why I really want, wanted to uh, discuss this one with you, even though it's not available at the very moment, because I just think this is a really good learning experience for you when you're, you're going through these properties, because location, location, man, that's the most important thing. The agent had stated, this is the uh, public remarks from the agent, brick quad within a mile of university circle, all units, three bed, one bath, all updated in 2018. Highlights include vinyl windows throughout, glass block windows and basement, porches on each unit, newer furnaces and hot water tanks, walkable to university circle, some off street parking, available in drive no through traffic on the block close to public transportation and gas station convenience store all units were rented at 800 through cmha three bedroom rentals in the area getting as much as 1200 a month university circle in the surrounding area is home to case western reserve university many of cleveland's cultural institution university hospital brand new development restaurants upscale condos wade oval park little italy and Cleveland Clinic's main campus. So we're priced right. Apparently we could bring in a ton of money. It's a quad, best thing to finance. 
by University Circle, college rentals. Everything sounds like it's freaking amazing, which is why I think you're so high on this investment. But that is why you hire me because we need to dig deeper, deeper, okay? Now, what I've done for you is I've pulled up Google Earth. And yeah, we are right there, hop, skip, and a jump. We're just a very little bit northeast of University Circle in Little Italy, two great areas. I understand why you'd want to be near them. If you can get properties in there or rent to college students over here, that's freaking great. You're, you're barking up the right tree, but we got to dig deeper, brother. Now, there are certain uh, areas of the Cleveland market where you, you in, in pretty much every like Midwestern Rust Belt type city, you hear people say like, oh, you, you know, that particular neighborhood, it can change on a block by block basis. And, you know, this little area more so uh, than any. Now, East Cleveland itself, if you check out the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, I have given East Cleveland a grade of F. It is a crummy neighborhood. It is the hood. It is one of the worst neighborhoods in the Cleveland market, if not the United States of America. Poverty, drug addiction, violence, property theft, murders, worst of the worst, blight, right? If you think about the ghetto, East Cleveland is the freaking ghetto, dude. There's like nothing good in, in East Cleveland, right? You're not going to find a lot of high quality tenants in East Cleveland. You only live in East Cleveland because you don't have an opportunity to live anywhere else. There's nothing good about East Cleveland. Now, I've even done videos. I've done a video on this. I sold a quad in East Cleveland, though, that had a lot of similarities uh, to this, and I thought it was great for out-of-state investors. And um, if you go to uh, Mayfield Road, okay, you just go a little bit of east from Little Italy, University Circle. We're just going to cruise east on Mayfield Road. Then you kind of go northeast, just north of Coventry Village. There's this nice little triangle of properties. We've got uh, just a nice little neighborhood in here. We've got a ton of natural borders. Right to the west, we got the big old cemetery, which is directly to the east of the quad you're looking at. Right to the north, we got Forest Hill Park Reserve, okay? So more like parking and park and wildlife and whatnot. And then of course, to the South, we got Coventry Village, which is nice and trendy. And I sold a nice little quad in there. And even though it's East Cleveland, I was, and I, you know, I explained it. And this, that property is on the investment properties for sale show as well. So what I'll do is I'll put the link to that in the show notes so you guys can check it out. Now, normally I think East Cleveland's crummy, but I was like, yo, dude, we are literally on the border of some nice stuff and we're getting a ton of college dudes coming in and renting this, you know, Case Western students, blah, 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 blah. So even though it's East Cleveland, I like it. You know, basically I was uh, giving a bunch of bullet point reasons uh, why I thought it made a lot of sense to buy that property, which is pretty much identical to the, the reasons the particular listing agent has given us on this property, 1825 Lakeview. But here is the difference. Let's cruise back over, still on Google Earth here. Let's just cruise over to 18325 Lakeview. Now, natural borders, when you're worry, uh, working with neighborhoods where it's like really hot and then it goes to really sketchy, there's typically like a big natural boundary where you can see the, the breaking point, the changing point, right? People use the term other side of the tracks, right? And, uh, you know, with that neighborhood I liked, okay, we had that. On the north, we had parks. On the on the west, we had a big, huge natural break. No no people there, right? We got the, uh, was that a cemetery or was that a park? Uh, Lakeview Cemetery, yeah. So we got uh, the big old cemetery and then a park. West, north, and then right to the south, we got a good neighborhood. Well, over here, this is kind of working against us. The same thing that made the other neighborhood a pro is a con over here because we've got university circle in little italy okay but then we go to that same cemetery that is right there so in between the good stuff we got the big old natural break the cemetery okay and then to the north we got just more crummy ghetto so if you actually go down to where the street is if you look on lakeview right there's our quad right to the west that's an empty lot. That home was torn down right to the east. That was torn down. Then you got another house. And then it appears like the one right next to that was torn down. If you go to the street, which is directly north, right, that borders the backyard. If you look, it's called Woodlawn Avenue. 
the entire freaking street has been torn down, okay? What that means is all the homes in this whole street, like how many plots do we have in a row here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 plots in a row on Woodlawn. There were 16 homes there and they all were so run down and so dilapidated. They all had to be torn down. And then if you look across the street, you got three, then you got a house, then you got another two, then you got five houses, then you got another two. You go the other street north of that. Looks like we got a house on the corner there. This is Penrose now. You got a house, then you got a vacant lot, a house, a vacant lot, a house. Then you got one, two, three, four, five vacant lots, another three houses, a vacant lot, two houses, a vacant lot, four houses, a vacant lot, two houses, one, two, three, four, five more vacant lots. You go to the other side of the street, corner of Penrose and Forest Hill Avenue, two vacant lots. Then we got, what is that, six houses, two more vacant lots, a house, vacant lot, house, vacant lot, four houses, vacant lot, house, vacant lot, three more vacant lots. Go, you know, continue go north, Brightwood Street, three vacant lots, a house, two vacant lots, a couple more houses with some vacant lots, a few more houses across the street, another deal. The whole goddamn street has been torn down. There is literally uh, on the corner of Forest Hill all the way to Euclid Avenue, that whole street there, I only see three homes that are remaining standing. And then uh, if you see to the Northeast, it just continues on and on. So this little pocket, yes, this little pocket is really close to nice stuff, um, but that's not always the full story. Because the actual neighborhood itself is just god, god awful destroyed. And then something else that's kind of very telling. Going to, uh, moving from like the aerial view on Google Earth here to the actual street view, you know, where you actually put that little yellow guy on the street. Uh, you see our big old quad right there. And of course, as just mentioned, right, we got two big old vacant lots right next to it. Turning this, right, turning it to the east. What do you see there? All I see is just a ton of crummy stuff, right? The street's destroyed. We got a few crummy houses minus all of our vacant lots. Everything is just total blight and peril. But what is smack dab in front of our face? Would well, you look at that? That looks to be a pretty expensive, all black, tinted windows Lincoln Navigator. You know, that's, uh, that's a fairly expensive uh, SUV, okay? So you got a, just on Google Earth, right? Google Earth, random picture here. This is a snapshot of the neighborhood. This is exactly um, a snapshot of what you'd be buying if you purchased this property. All blight. These houses are crummy. They're so bad, they're getting torn down. And then, boom, we got this big old fancy black SUV. Uh, I'll give you one guess as to the, the occupation of the gentleman who's driving <laughs> that Lincoln Navigator. And if you guess anything other than drug dealer, you're wrong. So that is a, a look into this property, Angus. And I felt that that was really important because you were very, very high on this property. And um, there's reasons for why you're so high based upon the marketing. But I wanted to really peel back, peel back the layers of transparency and, and give you this look. Now, I'm not saying one should never buy super blighted properties. It works for some people. Some people it will work uh, for you and your plan, what you've identified and what me and you have been working on thus far. I don't, I don't see this being a match from a risk standpoint. In addition to that though, I'm not just poo-pooing on people who want to buy high risk stuff. If you want to buy high risk stuff, that's cool. Which brings me to my next point, Angus, you're actually interested in a property that we've had on the investment properties for sale. So 616 East 117th. Okay. That is a multifamily uh, property that I am selling. Now, here is the thing. Angus, you asked me if, you, if I think that would work for you. I don't really think that would work for you specifically. Um, reason being, you know, it's just, it's, it's another F-class property, another F-class risk. And with what you're trying to do, you have a few million dollars, you're trying to passively invest and you need a property manager to handle that. You don't have a lot of contacts in Cleveland. And Holton Wise, we're not going to take on properties that are that blighted for our uh, management and construction. It's just not worth the hassle for us. I think properties like that work for those folks who are local. Uh, those work great for contractors, guys that are literally doing it themselves to actually 
pay a company like ours, a third party company to handle all the BS involved, man, it can get pretty costly. And I just don't think it's a risk you want to take on. But that said, if you decided you really wanted to get into something that high risk, that's totally cool. Um, but here's the thing you got to understand. And this is why I dislike this Lakeview property so much for investors. Lakeview listed at 149900 Now, the property that I have on Holton Wise TV, the, the property is priced more appropriately taking all the risks involved, right? Very similar property, but I've got it for less than half of what this Lakeview is. So even if you're like, yeah, man, I'm down with all the risks. I'm ready to rock and roll. What they have priced Lakeview at, I, I don't think it makes any sense. If you are somebody out there who's interested in purchasing a high risk asset, and I don't like to use the MLS search and analysis to show as a platform to market my listings and the properties that I'm selling on the investment properties for sale show. So it's not like I'm just trying to take this opportunity to pitch you guys on 616 East 117th. I'm really just trying to provide you with the most possible detailed explanation and education I can, Angus. I mean, that's what you're paying me for. So again, if you do want to go high risk, you can, if you're going to pick one and Lakeview became available, I would say you, sh you would definitely be better off paying less than half and getting 616 East 117th. But I'm not trying to sell you, Angus. I don't think you should necessarily buy 616 East 117th because I don't think it works for the plan that you've laid out for me and what you and I have been doing together. It's going completely into left field. It's not what you and I are trying to do. But for everyone else out there who might be watching this and you are a local and you are a savage and you're used to uh, working with super high risk stuff, uh, if you're looking at one of the two, you're looking at the the Lakeview property versus East 117th. I think East 117th, of course, going to make a lot more sense because you don't have to pay as much money and that's priced appropriately. This one, in my opinion, is way overpriced and I think it's probably going to fall out of contract and come back on the market. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.